One of the primary objectives of business math is to describe business situations and solve business problems. Let's take a look at understanding the concept and rules of equations. Many business problems requiring a mathematical solution have to be converted to formulas. A formula is a mathematical statement describing a real-world situation in which letters represent number quantities. Here's an example of a formula. In a business situation, revenue less expenses is a profit. The mathematical formula is revenue minus expenses equals profit or R minus E equals P. By knowing the numerical value of any of the two of the three parts, we can use a formula to determine the unknown part. Formulas are a way of standardizing repetitive business situations. They're used in almost every aspect of business activity and are an essential tool for the business person. Later in this course, we'll see how formulas are applied to topics such as markup, markdown, percents, interest rates, financial ratios, inventory, and depreciation. As valuable and widespread as formulas are, they cannot anticipate all business situations. Today, business people must have the ability to analyze the facts of a situation and devise a custom-made formula to solve business problems. These formulas are actually mathematical equations. Equations are mathematical statements expressing a relationship of equity, usually written as a series of symbols that are separated into left and right sides and joined by an equal sign. X plus 7 equals 10 is an equation. In English, we write by using words to form complete thoughts known as sentences. Equations convert written sentences describing business situations into mathematical sentences. When the statement contains an equal sign, it's an equation. If it does not contain an equal sign, it's simply an expression. S plus 12, as an example, is an expression. Equations express business problems in their simplest form. There are no adjectives or words of embellishment, just the facts. S plus 12 equals 20 is an equation. An equation is a mathematical statement using numbers, letters, and symbols to express a relationship of equity. Equations have an expression on the left side and an expression on the right side connected by an equal sign. Letters of the alphabet are used to represent unknown quantities in equations and are called variables. S plus 12 equals 20 is an equation. In the equation here, S is the variable or the unknown. The 12 and the 20 are constants or knowns. Variables and constants are also known as terms of the equation. The plus sign and the equal sign separate the terms and describe the relationship between them. To solve the equation means to find the numerical value of the unknown that makes the equation true. From our equation, s plus 12 equals 20, what value of s would make the equation true? Is it 6? No, 6 plus 12 is 18, and 18 doesn't equal 20. Is it 10? No, 10 plus 12 is 22, and 22 doesn't equal 20. How about 8? Yes, 8 plus 12 does equal 20. By substituting 8 for the variable s, we've found the value of the unknown that satisfies the equation and makes it true, 20 equals 20. The numerical value of the variable that makes the equation true, in this case 8, is known as the solution or root of the equation. The meanings of the sign plus, minus, times, and divided by are still the same. Equations have a few fundamental designations, however, that we must learn. Multiplication of 5 times y, for example, may be written as 5xy, 5 dot y, 5 with the y in parentheses, or simply 5y. 
The number 5 in the term 5y is known as the coefficient of the term. In cases in which there is no numerical coefficient written, such as w, the coefficient is understood to be a 1, therefore 1w equals w. Division in equations is indicated by the fraction bar. For example, the term 5 divided by y would be written as follows. It is important to remember that an equation is a statement of equality. To solve the equation, we must move or transpose all the unknowns to one side and all the knowns to the other. We accomplish this by performing the same operation on both sides of the equation. By doing the same thing on both sides of the equation, we create a new equation that has the same solution as the original. It's customary for the unknowns to be on the left side and the knowns to be on the right side, such as x equals 7. Transposing involves the use of inverse or opposite operations. To transpose a term in an equation, note the operation indicated and apply the opposite operation to both sides of the equation as follows. If the operation indicated is addition, use subtraction. If it's subtraction, use addition. If it's multiplication, use division. And if it's division, use multiplication. Here are the steps for solving equations and proving the solution. Step 1. Transpose all the unknowns to the left side of the equation and all the knowns to the right side of the equation by using the following operation order for solving equations. Parentheses, if any, must be cleared before any other operations are performed. To clear parentheses, multiply the coefficient by each term inside the parentheses. So, if our equation is 3 parentheses 5c plus 4 equals 2, then we convert 3 parentheses 5c plus 3 times 4 to equal 2. So, 15c plus 12 equals 2. To solve equations with more than one operation, first apply opposite operation using additions and subtractions. Then apply opposite operations using multiplication and division. Step 2. Prove the solution by substituting your answer for the letter or letters in the original equation. If the left and right sides are equal, the equation is true and your answer is correct. Remember, an equation is a statement of equality. The left side must equal the right side for the equation to be true. The word equation, in fact, is derived from the word equal. Let's use an example. Solve the equation x plus 4 equals 15 and prove the solution. The equation x plus 4 equals 15 indicates addition plus 4. To solve for the x, apply the opposite operation, subtraction. Subtract 4 from each side. Now for proof. The solution can be easily proven by substituting our answer, 11, for the letter or letters in the original equation. If the left and right sides are equal, the equation is true and the solution is correct. So if x plus 4 equals 15, and 11 plus 4 equals 15, 15 equals 15, and the equation is true. Some parentheses are used in equations. They contain a number just outside the left-handed parentheses known as the coefficient, and two or more terms inside the parentheses. As an example, 5 parentheses 3x plus 6 equals 20. In solving equations, parentheses must be removed before any other operations are performed. To remove parentheses, multiply the coefficient by each term inside the parentheses. We can apply this rule with the following example. 5 parentheses 3x plus 6 equals 20 is actually 15x plus 30 equals 20. Let's take a look at another example of equations containing parentheses. Let's solve the following equation. Take a look. Because the equation contains parentheses, we must begin there. 
Following the rule, for removing parentheses, multiply the coefficient 8 by each term inside the parentheses as you see here. Now, solve the equation by isolating the unknown k on the left side. Add and subtract first, then multiply and divide. When equations contain unknowns that appear two or more times, they must be combined. Here are the steps to combining multiple unknowns. Step 1. To combine unknowns, they must be on the same side of the equation. If they're not, move them all to the same side. Here's an example. Step 2. Once the unknowns are on the same side of the equation, add or subtract their coefficients as indicated, so 5x minus 2x equals 12 really is 3x equals 12. Let's solve for the equation 4c plus 7 minus c equals 25 minus 6c and prove the solution. Step 1. To solve the equation, we begin by combining the two terms on the left side that contain c. 4c minus c equals 3c. This leaves 3c plus 7 equals 25 minus 6c. Step 2. Next, move the negative 6c to the left side by adding plus 6c to both sides of the equation, as you see here. That leaves us 9c plus 7 equals 25. Now that all the terms containing the unknown c have been combined, we can solve the equation. 9c equals 18 and c equals 2. The letter x is commonly used to represent the unknown. The relationship between the knowns and the unknowns involves addition, subtraction, multiplication or division, or a combination of two or more of these. Here are the steps for writing equations and expressions. Step 1. Read the written statement carefully. Step 2. Identify and underline the key words and phrases. Step 3. Convert the words to numbers and mathematical symbols. Think of equations as complete mathematical sentences. Equations include the verb is or another verb. When no such verb is present, the statement is an expression. Let's take a look at an example of writing expressions. For the following statements, underline the key words and translate them into expressions. A number increased by 18. A number increased by 18 would be n plus 18. Let's see how to apply these skills in business situations. You'll learn a logical procedure for setting up and solving business-related word problems. Some problems have more than one way to arrive at an answer. The key, once again, is not to be intimidated. Learning to solve word problems requires practice, and the more you do it, the easier it will become, and the more comfortable you'll feel with it. Here are the steps for setting up and solving business word problems. Understand the situation. Step 1. If the problem is written, read it carefully, perhaps a few times. If the problem is verbal, write it down, including the facts of the situation. Step 2. Identify all of the parts of the situation. Separate them into knowns and unknowns. These parts can be any variables, such as dollars, people, boxes, tons, trucks, anything. Separate them again into known and unknowns. Step 3. Make a plan. Create an equation. The object here is to solve for the unknown. Ask yourself what math relationship exists between the knowns and the unknowns. Step 4. Work out a plan. Solve the equation. To solve the equation, you must move the unknowns to one side of the equal sign and the knowns to the other side. Step 5. Check your solution. Does your answer make sense? Is it exactly correct? It's a good idea to estimate and approximate answers by using rounded numbers. This will tell you if your answer is in the correct range. If it's not, either the equation is set up incorrectly or the solution is wrong. If this occurs, go back and start again. A ratio is a fraction that describes a comparison of two numbers or quantities. In business, numbers often take on much more meaning when they're compared with other numbers in the form of a ratio. 
Ratios can compare anything, money, weights, measures, output, or individuals. The units don't have to be the same. If we can buy 9 ounces of shampoo for $2, this is actually a ratio of ounces to dollars, or 9 to 2. A proportion is a statement indicating that two ratios are equal. Proportions are equations, with as representing the equal sign. Here are the steps for solving proportion problems using cross-multiplication. Step 1. Assign a letter to represent the unknown quantity. Step 2. Set up the proportion with one ratio expressed as a fraction on each side of the equal sign. Step 3. Multiply the numerator of the first ratio by the denominator of the second and place the product on the side of the equal sign. Step 4. Multiply the denominator of the first ratio by the numerator of the second and place the product on the other side of the equal sign. Step 3 and step 4 taken together are also called cross multiplication. Step 5. Solve for the unknown. Remember, when setting up a proportion, the variables on both sides must be in the same order, numerator to denominator. For example, dollars over donuts equals dollars over donuts. Here's an example of solving proportions. On a recent trip, a car used 16 gallons of gasoline to travel 350 miles. At that rate, how many gallons of gasoline would be required to complete a trip of 875 miles? The situation can be solved by setting up and solving a proportion. The proportion reads 16 gallons is to 350 miles as x gallons is to 875 miles. Using cross multiplication to solve the problem, we get x equals 40.